Hello again everybody and welcome to Test Flight in the MiG-21 Fish Pen. And this series of Test Flight is going to be slightly different from the previous series in that I'm not going to focus so much this time around on learning step by step, going through my normal process of the basics and then moving on into the more advanced stuff. I'm going to make this into more of a preview of the aircraft type series. The version of the aircraft that I'm flying right now is a preview version that Leatherneck Simulations was kind enough to provide to myself and several others. So I'm going to focus on the basics up front and hit the uh, startup, shutdown, taxi, takeoff and landing, radar usage and weapons employment up front so that uh, if this does happen to get released before the aircraft itself, you know, you'll be able to see the, the stuff that I'm sure you're curious about and want to know how it works in the aircraft. And then I'll move on to phase two of the series where I get into the detailed systems work that I like to do, where I go beyond the procedures and seek to really understand the systems and how they actually work. So that's my plan. And okay, so let me just go ahead and get started. I am doing what I always do when I first load up an aircraft. I just get it into the air and set up the overall control. So I have the my throttle, my rotor, and my joystick mapped to the pitch, roll, and yaw axes so I can at least control the aircraft. And you know, after flying it around for a few minutes before starting to record this, I can tell this you're it handles like I would expect out of a Delta Wing fighter. It is very, very stable in forward flight. It accelerates extremely well, and I'll just plug into the afterburner to the second stage and put it into a climb here just to demonstrate exactly how much acceleration and how light this aircraft is. But it doesn't turn very well, which you as well you would expect out of a Delta Wing fighter. So acceleration, catching up with aircraft, and working this aircraft as a fighter interceptor is going to be very very effective once you get into the employment of the aircraft. Now we also have several options when it comes to employment of the aircraft in the air to ground role and that's what I'm primarily going to be focusing on myself and I have bombs, I have rockets, I even have a radar guided beam rider uh, air to ground missile that I'll be able to use. So there's a lot of stuff that's available here, the systems detail and the systems modeling I can already tell my goodness there's a lot to learn here and a lot of manual uh, pilot workload that's going to go into employing this aircraft. So the overall test flight series is going to be a long one. It's going to be the longest one that I've done just because there is so much to learn. But I'll hit the basics first because I know that's what you're looking for. Okay, so yeah, you can see the acceleration. You can see now I'll just try to turn. Just do a uh, min turning radius turn right here. And yeah, really not much going on here. And the flight model for the aircraft is... Uh, just amazing so far. Um, I've got a clean aircraft right now, handles extremely well, exactly what I would expect, and what i found is that when I put uh, external loads on the aircraft that you can get a lot of quirky behavior out of the aircraft, and it's well documented in the flight manual, and it is well represented here when it comes to how the aircraft handles and how you have to handle the aircraft to keep it in one piece when you are flying with external stores. So it's not going to be a yank and bank fighter by any means as we get going. So let me go ahead and get back into the uh, DCS interface, show you some of the features that we have as far as options when setting the aircraft up, and then I'll get back into the aircraft and start with the startup and shutdown procedures. So I hope you do enjoy this. I know I will, so I will see you in a second. Okay, and upon installing the aircraft for the first time, what I always do is go to the options screen and just see what all is available under the special tab. So if I come over to the MiG-21 tab, I see that I have Simplified Engine Management, Prevent Canopy Icing, Stabilization, Stabilization Mode Control, and then Cockpit Shake Level. I know that Simplified Engine Management ties into the way that the engine is set up. A wear and tear is modeled on the engine, so depending on how you use the engine and how you fly the aircraft, uh, damage and wear, normal wear and tear is going to build up. So you might find yourself, if you fly the aircraft in certain ways, without an engine. So. You can click that on and off using this. I'm going to definitely leave this off so that I have the full uh, complexity of the engine modeled. And prevent canopy icing. Under certain flight regimes, uh, icing is modeled. So you can click that on and off as well. I will, of course, leave that on because I want to see what that ha what happens with that. Stabilization mode button. I have, frankly have no idea what that's going to do for us, but that's what this series is all about. It's figuring out all of these little uh, quirks and seeing what all is modeled in the MiG-21. Cockpit shake level is set to the default setting 100. I know that this uh, introduces in certain flight regimes and certain altitudes and airspeeds a shaking of the cockpit uh, that goes beyond the normal buffeting that you get in all the aircraft. So 
uh, just some different uh, cues there visually are going to be available for us and so far I've seen that happen and it's very very cool I'll point it out once it does start happening once we get into the aircraft and under controls we have I've already done some of this on the initial setup but the normal axis commands are available so roll pitch y'all I've already got them set up I've got everything also set up here that I as far as what I normally do for my zoom controls and the Trek IR profile we have a lot of different commands here, a lot of stuff that can be mapped to the joystick and a lot of stuff that can be changed around on the keyboard. And I'm finding that some of the things are mapped to a different location in the MiG-21 than you may be used to in the other aircraft. For example, pulling up the kneeboard uses a different set of keyboard commands here. And the kneeboard functionality is also something that is greatly expanded and um, used by the developers in the MiG-21 to, to great effect here. So I'll be highlighting that as well as I go. Okay, so let me go ahead and duck out, and there's a lot more mapping of uh, uh, buttons to go as we get started. So, let me look and see what we have for campaigns. I haven't really looked and seen exactly what is available yet, but we do have a campaign called Stillness in Time. So I will eventually be getting into this, I'm sure. Single missions, we do have a few set up already for us. So, target practice missions, which I'll definitely be, uh, be employing. And then it looks like some... Uh, just basic single missions set up to get us started. Very, very cool. Now, one thing to definitely highlight here is that it does have a very full and a very, very useful training module. So the first thing that I would do, and the first thing that I have done myself, is read the manual. Get to know the aircraft before trying to figure it out on your own. Or don't, whatever, is ha whatever uh, you like to do, but you have a lot of options here. This is very comprehensive. I've already been through all of these so far, and already I have a very, very... Uh, well, rudimentary uh, grasp of the aircraft, but these were very, very helpful. They are kind of funny in a lot of places, too. They're very, very well done. So highly recommended, but I'm going to, of course, seek to go beyond this and uh, provide some more insights as an aircraft maintainer and as an aircraft weapons loader and as an overall aviation history buff as I go as well. But that's definitely there to get you started. And, of course, fast missions and instant action. So I'm going to start this one as an instant action mission, uh, starting with a cold start, and I'm going to run through the startup and shutdown procedure real quick just to uh, get an overall feel for it and see how it goes and how I like it. So, let me go ahead and jump into the cockpit, and I will see you in a bit. And picking things up on the ground at Nalchik Air Base. And I just had a MiG 21 taxi, a couple of MiG 21s taxi for my left, so we might get a little bit of an air show as we get started here and have some stuff to look at. Okay, but let me go ahead and pull up the checklist, and I'll go ahead and start running through the, the startup procedure. And it looks like the developers have put a lot of uh, a lot of time and a lot of thought into setting up the kneeboard. And if I look down here on my left knee, it looks like the kneeboard is going to be displayed by default. So as I cycle through the pages, it's automatically displayed down here with my, where my left knee would be. But yeah, it looks like they have uh, information for communications and navigation. And I've uh, also added myself the checklist that is included in the flight manual that comes with DCS. Now keep in mind that this is not a tutorial by any means. I'm going to go through step by step and to me doing that, that's what you can do on your own. That's not really a tutorial. I just want to show this, you know, in this phase one of test flight to just show you what all is here. But I'll get into the detailed description of what all this stuff means in phase two. But okay, let me go ahead and get power onto the aircraft so we can get things started. So it's PO750 current converter on. I've got two switches plus a battery heat switch, both on the right vertical console, 41, 42, 43. So these three switches on. Okay, DC battery, and then I'm going to check voltage and looking for no less than 24.5 volts. And some also some indicators to come on. So I'm coming down to my battery switch. Okay, battery on, and let me check the voltage here real quick. That's all the way around here. Okay, V times 10, so I'm at it about, yeah, 24.5 volts. So that looks good. And let me run through the rest of this real quick. I don't want to leave the battery on, and this is going to be a battery start, the way this is set up in this checklist. I don't want to leave it on too long, because <laughs> that will happen. It will just kind of die on me. So let me get set up here one more time. Okay, battery on. I know I've got a good voltage. And let me go... Fire extinguisher on, radio power, and black box. So fire extinguisher is going to be over here on this panel. And black box, that's the flight recorder right here. Okay, got the MiG-21 taken off for us. Very nice. 
<laughs> okay, very cool. Okay, now coming back down. Okay, I got the recorder on, and let me go ahead and call for take for uh, startup clearance. So that need to go radio on for that. And uh, ATC, now chick, request startup. Now chick, start the And this apparently is something that's. Uh, I guess more common on the Russian side of the house than the U.S. calling for startup clearance. I believe on the U.S. side that it's just automatically assumed that when you file the site plan that you're going to be starting up and then you would, uh, uh, you know, get in touch with the ETC. It's eh, just something I'm not used to, but it is something that's valid for the Russian uh, setup that we're in right now. Okay, I've got that one airborne. Very nice. Okay, now fuel pumps. Uh, first fuel pump on uh, right horizontal console 57 third on 59 and then a additional drainage pump so on 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 I can hear the pumps kick in working off of DC power off the battery presumably okay and then throttle to let me see APU start on and then throttle to idle okay APU start on throttle to idle there's like a little switch right there you actuate and I'm going to put it just forward of the idle position for startup Okay, check engine state. I want this not in the cold start. I'm in the normal start position. Now I depress and hold for about two or three, four seconds. The start switch and the start sequence starts. I need to just kind of let this run its course for about 45 seconds. Let's see. Wait till the process is over! Exclamation point. Okay, got it. Otherwise, you may interrupt it. Overloading the electrical system. Engine light, idle IPM should be around 35% for number one and 50% for number two. So I have two RPM indicators over here on my tachometer. Uh, one and two, it's um, different compressor, um, uh, stages of the compressor that I'm getting RPM on. So number one should be about 35%, number two should be about 50%. So those appear to be coming up normally. Okay, then after that, I start to get some of the aircraft systems up and running. So gyro for instruments one on, that's right horizontal console number 56. Okay, that's looking good. So let me look for this gyro, right horizontal, 56. And let's see here. I've got two gyros right here. Could that be it? I think not. It was right horizontal console, so... Okay, it would be horizontal console. Okay, so I've got that one on. Go to the next page. Gyro for instance 2. That's right next to it, 55. Got it. I assume those are the right ones. This is the kind of detail that I'll get into in phase 2. Figuring out exactly how all this stuff ties together. Okay, now AC generator on. That's right next to that. It's position 49. Okay, there's AC gen on. And yeah, I can hear the AC power kick in. A little uh, different tone in my headset. Okay, automatic radio compass, radio altimeter, and marker. And this look at, looks like it's just going to be going down this panel, getting stuff up and running. So radio compass, radar altimeter. I'll just go ahead and... Uh, Hit all these switches and then re-reference the checklist. Okay, so that was radar altimeter, navigation system, ADI. Okay, HSI, autopilot, autopilot pitch, trimmer, hydraulic pumps, nose cone, RWR, SOD. That's the transponder SOD channel. I know that I got a channel that I needed to set during the mission briefing. I won't worry about that since I'm just going to shut it right down immediately afterwards. But I'll, uh, I'll get to that in further videos. HSI adjust push button. Press until the NPP scale self-adjusts to the correct magnetic force. It usually takes five seconds. Now, yeah, see how my little uh, navigation instrument... I would call this an HSI. It's uh, called something else in Russian. It's um, I need to calibrate this, and I do that by pressing this button and holding it. And it calibrates to the crop proper magnetic heading. Okay, so that's good to go. And then I need to lock the close and lock the canopy. So let me go ahead and close it. Here's the canopy lock over here, somewhere, yeah, right here. Locked, and let me pressurize. And that's going to, yeah, I can hear the canopy seal inflate. So now I've got a good, a tight seal on my canopy. And this little light went out, so I'm assuming that means I have a good seal and good, uh, and a uh, good canopy, uh, good closer lock canopy. Okay, let me press on to next. The missile controller power on, pylon 1 and 2, 3 and 4, gun side power on, and IFF off. That's all on the right vertical console, 25, 27, 28, 33. So that is, okay, gun side camera, pylon 1, 2, pylon 3, 4, 
That's all over here. I'm not going to do that since I don't have anything loaded this time, so I'll just leave those off. Let me go IFF on. That's right for Google Console number 35. IFF, where are you? Maybe over here? I missed the DC generator at some point. I know that I was supposed to turn that on. So that's a little bit of cleanup work. Um, okay, I'll come back to this later on in the next video. That's it for the starter procedure. And uh, what we have here, I mean, it's not the full starter procedure. I have another uh, uh, pilot's manual in, in Russian that was translated to English that has a lot of systems checks that could be run. I think this is more of like the alert startup procedure that, I mean, a lot of you, that's all that you're looking for. You just want to get the aircraft started and into the air, and that's fine. I'm looking more for systems knowledge and understanding the process and understanding the system. So, in phase two of test flight, that's what I'll be going through is the full detailed procedure. Because there is a lot of stuff in here. I mean, I only hit a very, very small amount of switches. I haven't really turned any of the systems on. I haven't got my navigation or communications up and running. But that's enough to get you started and that's enough to let you see how the aircraft is started up. Now, the shutdown procedure that's given in the manual is just to do all that in the, the, uh, yeah, here it is right here. After parking, turn off the aircraft systems and the engine by following the reverse order described in the startup table. There's always a little bit more to the uh, story than that because you want to do things in a way that's not going to overstress the generator, overstress the electrical system, and not damage the components by just suddenly removing power to them by the generator just kicking off. So there is an order that you want to go in, so I'll just kind of go by memory here in the order that I uh, that I went. I think that IFF switch is that over here, actually. I know there was some stuff over here, but I'll catch that in later videos in the detailed phase two. So let me go radio, arc, radio altimeter, off, 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 and off, trim off, pumps off, I think that's hydraulics. Okay, off, flight recorder off. Now this is where I would put a little bit more thought into it. I'm just going to do this quickly, but um, okay, let me kill the gyros. Off and off. Let me kill my AC generator. Let me kill. Uh, let's see here. Fuel pumps. I want to leave those off until my engine is off. Come over here. Is there anything that else that I can kill? Okay, let me go ahead and pull my throttle to cut off. Okay, so back to idle. Cut off. Okay, the engine is pulling down, so let me go ahead and go APU off, fire extinguisher switch off, and yeah, that was it over there. Now I can clean up the rest of my electrical, I actually fuel pumps off, I'm still on battery power, kill my DC generator since it's not functioning, it's not hooked up to the, or the engine isn't running anymore, and battery switch off, and I'm right back where I started, okay, I should have, uh, Probably depressurized and deflated the canopy seal before killing power. And let me go ahead and try to get the canopy open. I know I clicked up there to close it. And yeah, see what I mean? I probably should have done this before killing power. But, um... Okay, anyway, I'll figure that out next time around. But, um... Uh, Okay, that's the startup and shutdown phase one. This is by no means a tutorial. None of the test flight series is a tutorial. I'll get to all that and on the range. This is just me figuring out the systems, and hopefully you are learning something as I go, especially in phase two. But okay, that's going to do it for this one. I'm going to come back next video with taxi, takeoff, flyer, fly a quick circuit around the airfield, land, and see where we go from there. So hey, thanks again for watching. I will see you next time.